Guys, welcome back. And uh, this week we thought we would try and touch on a, a subject that we haven't already discussed, which isn't actually that um, that easy after no. you know 80 odd videos. We've touched on just about most elements of equipment, whether it be how to set up your own bag, different product reviews, mm. fitting your stuff, Matt. Um, and we're going to touch on some golf ball fitting. Yeah, and something that gets requested quite a bit. A lot. Um, and we're going to just, I guess we're starting a series of ball videos because there's so much to tackle yeah. in terms of that. We're going to start with one of the many topics that come up when people ask about it. Yeah. And we've looked at whether we do, do we do wedges, do we do ball, do we do uh, kind of all that other stuff. And the answer is yes, we'll get to all of that. But mm -hmm. today we thought a really good video um, that we could touch on would be Let's take Matt's gamer golf ball. And many people's gamer golf many, ball. Probably still the, the number one be, played yeah. golf ball in, in golf, the Pro V1. And it's the, the, the original versus the black number, not, yeah. the, not the X. Not the X. And let's compare that to the, the off-brand, this new modern kind of more budget sensitive golf ball range that mm -hmm. we've got. So we've got the Snell Golf My Tour Ball. Yep. We've got the Encore golf balls. And then we've got the, the Vice Pro Plus. Right. So, we'll so they're, to, they're, they're considered premium in terms of the fact that they have a soft cover. That's they're, right. They're four-piece. Those are all four-piece balls, I believe. All pro four-piece. Um, yep, certainly. Yep, they are all four-piece. And that's the, the one thing we've got with that is these guys are all just coming at the premium construction with, yes. with, without the premium price tag. Yeah, and they're, and they're doing it. A lot of them are, I think, Vice, you order directly online. Mm -hmm. So they're eliminating, you know, the, the retail shop yes, from that. It's direct to consumer. <clears throat> so that's your price savings there. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other guys are probably doing a similar type deal. Yeah. And that's where they save the cost. Dean Snell, uh, who is, is the guy sort of really sort of credited with the original Pro V1 design. Oh, is that, um, is that yeah, where he came Yeah, so from? That's, okay. where he, that's where he was the guy who designed the original. I mean, there's, there's a, a bunch of different guys out there who, who we've heard, you know, he played their part. But... Um, from from you know what we're led to believe, Dean Snell was the guy who, who came up with the original Pro V1. So interesting. He then worked, uh, done some work with TaylorMade, and was a big part of, of their um, sort of rise in the golf ball market. Okay. And and that's another golf ball that gets a lot of credit nowadays. Yeah. TP5. TP5. TP5X. I mean, we we can all just go back to when McElroy switched out of the out of the Callaway stuff mm -hmm. after the Masters last year. Yep. He said the biggest thing was the golf ball. Mm. He said the TP5 for him was the most consistent golf ball he'd ever played. Which is a crazy thing to say well, for it, someone like that. He's, well, played, who, he's played them all, right? And he, and he was, you know, he was obviously a titleist guy for many <clears throat> years. You know, one is his first, certainly his first major with the titleist product at Congressional right. in that US Open. So, mm. you know, for him to say the tailor-made ball was the best he's ever played is it's quite a statement. And, yeah. and you know, it's a, it's a great golf ball. When we do our ball fittings in here, it tests really, really well. Mm. So, but we thought we'd take your gamer, <coughs> compare it to three of, of the kind of, um, you know, less, less kind of, I guess you call them, uh, Sort of regular brands. Yeah, so they're they're. I mean, you call maybe call them off brand or sort of underground brands or sure. something like that. But yep. it's it's a trend that I've noticed big mm -hmm. time where people are thinking, okay, Pro V ones we we've established they're very good. Like no one's ever going to say a Pro V one isn't an, an excellent ball. It's but are there other companies that can make something that performs quite nicely yeah. or similar mm -hmm. for an amount of money that's a bit more affordable? Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, like they're sixty. Four bucks Canadian in Canada, yeah, a lot for a dozen. Our, yeah, and I've got a lot of our U, you know US. Um, US would be maybe fifty or around fifty bucks. I think forty nine. You know, it's a lot of money. Nights, I think to be fair. Yeah, and and you know we saw um, when when Kirkland came out. Would it be last year? Uh, maybe the year before. I mean, the original so, one. Yeah, was the like original the year Kirkland was. Yeah. Was a game changer. It was whatever it was, twenty-five bucks for two dozen golf balls, crazy. And, and people were, you know, my golf spy done some testing on it, and they, mm. it tested really, really well. It was for amazing, them. yeah. So um, I think these companies are kind of trying to come in, reduce the overhead mm. um, that they have, and, and come in and shake up the market, yeah. and just go listen. We, we feel that like we can offer just as good a product at a significantly lower price. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see whether they get a, a section of the Pro V1 market or mm -hmm. do they get a section of the NXT Tour sure. market, the lower, because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that play those balls for the price. Yeah. They want a Pro V1 spin or characteristic, mm -hmm. but they don't want to pay the top end. Yeah. I yeah. feel like they'll lose more of that market segment, which it'll be interesting to see how it shapes up. But a lot of it has come from the fact that they do seem to test pretty well. So that's mm -hmm. why we wanted to do our own 
little version of that and see how it stacks up. We definitely did, and uh, just to show you guys exactly what the differences are, so if we start mm. to look at the variables involved, we're looking at ball speed, we're looking at launch and spin and feel, and, of you course. Know, and that's, that's a big one, feel. It just, is. You know, just to kind of touch on, we'll go into this in depth in other videos, but guys, when we do a ball fit in here, we start with the putter and work our way up to That's the driver. True. So many people are, are so consumed by lowering driver spin, you know, that type of thing. Most of the balls are designed within a, a pretty small margin to, to do the same thing. With, with that club, yeah, yeah, with the long clubs. That's it, it's to, to be fast, is to launch high mm. and spin low. Right. You know, that was one thing with the Pro V1. When they changed the construction of the, the Pro V1 in, in uh, a couple, probably two years ago now, a year and a half ago, they, they changed the, the construction to for the Pro V1 to spin less and be more in line with the Pro V1X with the driver. Off the tee, right. A lot of people out there will say that, you know, the, the Pro V1X is now the high spin ball and the Pro V1 is the lower spinning ball. From my conversations with Titleist, that's not the case. Right. They just, what they done was they lowered the spin on Pro V1 mm. um, to be in line with what the Pro V1X does. Because the, the guys on tour, especially from their feedback, where right. they loved how the Pro V1 felt around the greens, but it spun too much off the driver. The they wanted it to spin less off the driver. So they wanted uh, a more balanced golf ball. And, you know, that, that high launch, low spin off the tee, but you know, soft feel, low sp a high spin around the greens. That's your perfect combo. And especially for them playing super fast and firm greens, mm -hmm. if your ball isn't spinning like crazy around yeah. those greens, I don't know how they could, you know, they need that around the green. They have to have it. That's they to get that extra control. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to test. Uh, we've got four brands, like we said. We're yep. going to test. We're going to hit five drivers. Yes. Five six irons and five wedges with each. Yep, so okay. to get the full performance mm -hmm. across the bag. So we're gonna hit 60 shots. Yes. Um, and get a full range uh, of, of kind of numbers, launches, spins, and ball speeds. And, and let's see uh, let's see how they compare. This will be interesting. It will be interesting. I don't have too many preconceived ideas, but I haven't tested any mm -hmm. of the other balls um, yet, so mm -hmm. I have no idea what's gonna happen. This I'm sure good. you have a little bit because you've yeah. done some fits with, you do some fits with the vice and those when people ask. But absolutely, we, we you know, there's one of these golf balls and I won't tell you which one, um, actually quite often wins our ball, uh, our ball fitting test. Really? Yeah, one of these off brands. So uh, it'll be really interesting to, to see how, how you find them. And yeah. the, the preference of the individual player plays such a big part because, you know, feel is so subjective. Yes, of course. So um, Cool. Right, let's, uh, let's get to work. Let's see what, uh, what's the winner. All right, cool.
Okay, Matt, excellent stuff. Um, really interesting test. I thought that was fascinating. Yeah, I think there were some differences that I know you had some ideas of where you might see some differences. I actually had no idea. Mm -hmm. There's probably a couple I can give you some feel um, feedback on. But okay. I, uh, flight wise, I didn't see a whole lot of change yeah. in, uh, in the driver. It was kind of similar. If those golf balls were blank and, mm. you know, n n numbered one, two, three, and four, would you really have been able to pick out which was the $65 a dozen and which was the $40 a dozen golf ball? No. <laughs> not a chance? <laughs> no, absolutely not. The only thing I would say is the, uh, the Encore had a little bit of a hotter feel off the face. Okay. But uh, again, like not hardly anything. Mm -hmm. Would I have been able to say it was the Encore? No. And yeah. I wouldn't have known which ball was which. They all feel nice. They all feel soft covers, you know, kind of ball. Mm -hmm. um, and they flew pretty similar. So let's, let's look at driver first. Um, you were actually driving excellent pretty much with all of them. Um, ball speed within one mile an hour of the, of the fastest and the slowest. Um, Pro V1 was, Pro V1 and Vice were, were exactly the same ball speed, 167.6, exactly the same <laughs> launch angle and a couple of hundred RPMs of difference. I mean, crazy. trying to kind of emphasize to, to, to people the, how close they are is nothing to do with the ball it's the human variable of course yeah. you know that that's really what it is i mean if they, they're, they're performing basically the same within you'd say within 200 ish rpm is uh, remarkable is, is the same basically it's the same yeah. it's exactly yeah. the same um you know looking at strikes at a point you know they were a little bit on the toe side the club head speeds were very very similar again within uh, 0.5 with it, it's, yeah it, it was all it was all really really good mm. so um, the Snell ball actually went the longest by a little bit. It, it yep. carried um, about eight, mile, eight yards longer than your gamer. Yeah, and um, we, we saw that was a little bit higher launch little and higher a little launch. bit lower spin. Yeah, half, uh, uh, almost a degree more launch, 13.4 mm. versus 12.7, with a similar spin rate to your gamer uh, and at quicker And a hair speed. more ball speed. So yeah. you, you did definitely hit that one a little bit, hmm. uh, little bit further. Um, so driver-wise, though, you wouldn't be unhappy with any of them. No. Maybe the the vice to the Snell, you know, losing 12 yards in carry, you, you maybe wouldn't love that. Yeah. So we can we can say, I mean, we know that the swing speeds were relatively close and the strikes were relatively close. So yeah. the Snell is probably going to be one of the longest balls out there at this point, right? If, if someone out there is looking, um, you know, for a, a low spin golf ball, it appears to be definitely one of the ones to, to get your hands on to try it. Um, I don't so. think there's a lot of people that are, that mm -hmm. are looking, I mean, high spin players, you, um, you see it every day. Yeah. They're trying everything to get spin off their ball. Oh, They're absolutely. trying the driver, the shaft, everything they and want. And everyone's looking at, you know, what shaft should I get? What shaft should I mm. get? You know, maybe look at the ball and the club head. And loft or something. Yeah, that, yeah. Let's, let's look at those parameters versus, you know, always trying to get, you know, the shaft mm. to be stiffer to the point where you suffer in the, the being able to load the thing For and sure. produce that energy. So and that's a good point because we tried a bunch of different shafts with me mm -hmm. and I don't think many of them made a big spin difference. No. But we, we got 200 RPMs difference just from a ball change. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, over to the irons. Let's see what we were saw with that one. Um, wow, to Pro V1. Oh, Pro V1 was a little bit less. Let's yeah. see why that was. Looks like backspin. Yeah, a little bit of speed and a little extra spin. Same, same sort of thing. So, yeah. um, spin was was certainly higher with Pro V1 mm -hmm. uh, and, and a shade less, less speed. Interesting. But again, not enough to really be more than, you know, the, the spin, I would say, from Vice to Pro V1, you're looking at four or 500. That's not human variation. That's the ball. That would be the ball. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. That's I, the ball. I would agree with the that. ball speed is close enough that I would say the swings are more or less the same. But your Pro V1 off the irons has mm -hmm. got to be the highest spinning that we tested today. Mm -hmm. Interesting with that snail ball, the, the little extra speed, the little extra launch mm. and a fraction less spin. So it does seem to be a really high launch, low spin golf ball, it doesn't does, it? Yeah. There's the, the iron as well. It's exactly the same, a little bit quicker, mm. higher launch, less spin. So although it's not got the spin to stop it in the green, it's got the, it's got the land angle. Um, so if we look at the land angle of that, 47.5 versus 46.5. So it's so. got 47.5. It's pretty steep, right? As you've said, 
pretty steep as landing long as angle. You're, as long as your speed, um, I would say about 47 would be ideal, 46 to 48, somewhere in that window. Yeah. Tour players like to get it dropping in a little bit steeper than that. Okay. They, they'll spin it a bit more. Again, conditions uh, based. Yeah. Harder greens, faster tough, greens. Tough, tough pin positions and, and that type of thing. Mm. So, um, again, Snell's performing nicely there. Yeah. Higher launch, lower spin. It seems to be the theme for that one. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got, again, Snell, highest launch. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, with Significant yeah. too, right? A couple, couple of degrees. It's a lot. So when you're weighing it all up, you go, well, I, I, to be honest, like I would rather, you know, around 30 degrees of launch. That's always my, my benchmark number. number for... Uh, for a wedge shot, and this was your 58 degree going 90 yards, 90 wasn't yards, it? Yeah, yeah. So, so the highest spinning one was the Pro, Pro V one, quite a bit, By 11, almost a thousand, yeah, a thousand on average, yeah. almost. 11,382 versus, yeah, I mean it, over a thousand more than Snell. Than Snell. So again, Snell being the lowest spin ball we tested, and mm -hmm. then Pro V being the highest. Yeah. Um, in terms of when you were hitting them, you know, what was what was sort of the fuel differences and that type of thing. Uh, I would say off the wedges, mm -hmm. the Pro V1, it, it's kind of weird to say that a shot felt like it spun a lot. Sure. But you, you just hit a shot with that mm -hmm. and just felt like you could see the ball zipping or feel right. it. Yeah. Um, probably easier to see in real conditions yeah, yeah. where you can actually kind of hear the ball spin. It's amazing the feedback you, you get though on, on things it. like that. Just sense it. Yeah, you kind of just mm -hmm. sense it. They did have subtly different <clears throat> feels throughout the, throughout the bag, but yeah. there's no way that you would hit the Snell or you would hit this Encore and go, oh no, I can't play those. The feel is not nice enough. Mm -hmm. Similar. They're all pretty soft feeling. Um, the Pro V1 for me is just very familiar because yeah, that's yeah. what I use most of the time. Mm -hmm. But feel wise, I would say you'd have a difficult time. As you said, if you, if you blank tested them, you'd have a pretty hard time. Yeah. I think the general rule of thumb is here, it comes down to, you know, what's your budget? Mm. Is budget a part of the equation? And if it is, you probably want to look at one of these three other balls I that we've tested. I completely agree, yeah. Vice on Encore and Snell are all yeah. super, super, you know, value. But if, if budget's less of a, a, you know, an issue for you, you know, Pro V1's still a great option, as is Callaway, Chrome Soft, as is TP5. Mm -hmm. We just use Pro V because that's your gamer. Yeah, and I think so, it's one that people compare everything to. Everything, so it's the benchmark. It is, yeah. It's absolutely the benchmark. Which is a compliment to them in a, in a way, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I spent some time with uh, with Ping a few years back yeah. um, out there, and, you know, they were on their ball cannon. Uh, they still said for them at that time the Pro V1 was the most consistent ball <laughs> in all conditions that they had tested from their ball cannon. Mm. I like to use Ping as, as a kind of bit of a you know moral compass with that stuff because they have no skin in the game. I was going to say they don't make balls. They don't make a golf ball, so yeah. what you know they they are looking at it from a completely objective standpoint. As we are here, we don't you know we don't have any no. bias towards any ball company. We're just we're using you know the balls that we like the best. We test in here, our, our fittings are done with a Strixon golf ball. Yeah, you were we, saying. We really love how that Strixon golf ball performs. It's super durable. Um, I mean, for us as well in here, when people hit it off the screen, it, a lot of the golf balls crack and break. Really? Yep. And, uh, and that's one thing, Strixon is the most durable golf ball out there. Um, so it, we, we, we almost wow. never get any breakages with a Strixon golf ball. I think ball. you find a lot of people would take that as a selling feature. Yeah. If you're someone that hits it really straight, mm -hmm and you take a ball out of rotation only because you've scuffed it, not because yeah. you've hit it into the woods. I know. It is, it's important. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So we, we, the only thing I would say is um, price-wise, mm -hmm. I'll put them up in the description yeah. of the video, yep. um, but you're looking at close to half price for these other ones. Yeah. Uh, the Pro V is Super usually about value, twice as, yeah. Yeah, and, and they're performing great, I mean. You gotta go try them, have to go try them. It's something that you wanna pick up probably a, a box of of each and, mm. and go through it yourself. To, I think there you saw a little bit of, um, you know, some of their characteristics. But unless you try them, you know that that was Matt's test. Yes, true. You guys have got your own test to be done. But this gave you obviously a little preview as to what's going on. Take it as a guideline and then kind of dial it in for yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Excellent, guys. Uh, I hope this was valuable. It was to us. Uh, and every time we do a ball fit, we learn something new. And yeah. um, you know, to be honest, we never really get a consistent winner in the ball fitting. Which is kind of a, it shows you how close everything is it's in performance. The, everyone's making such a great product uh, yeah. out there nowadays. I mean, they do so much test of, of their own internally. 
they're, they're all going to know if they've got a bad product. Yeah, they're not going to release it knowing that it's 10 no. times worse than Pro-V, because exactly. why would they bother? Exactly. So, yeah. no, this, this is great. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll come to do a little bit more of a, an all-encompassing ball test where yes. we'll bring in the Pro-V um, X, we'll bring in TP5 mm -hmm. and 5X. We'll, we're going to do an overall we'll look at the golf ball. But this was kind of the budget golf ball, the, the, no, the, the kind of lesser-known brands versus yes. the... The, the cream of the crop in the Pro V1, the benchmark. Consider it kind of or part one of a, a ball fitting series. A like like lot, lot of requests for it, so we're yeah. going to do our very best to kind mm -hmm. of be detailed on this. Love it. Guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that as much as we did, and we'll see you again soon.